Hi right, guys, you know, some people say they'll have a rant or a hot take. Um, this is kind of like, I say a cross between both of them. You know, there's been a lot of people online talking about men being dissatisfied. Of course, there are women, you know, who come on being dissatisfied. But I wanted to focus on the men for a little while. Now, being a black man, I have always considered myself originally a Jamaican man. Then, you know, you go to North America, I mean Canada, and immediately you see, especially online, identify as black man. And I am black. I'm a dark-skinned black man. And one of the things I... You know, when I see it is when I go on YouTube or TikTok or Twitter, a lot of it is men trying to find their way. And I will be honest, a lot of the men online are not winning in life. And it's quite obvious. It's either you're speaking about the situation or you're being spoken off. And if you're being spoken off, normally it's something either crazy that you did or something wonderful that you did. And one of the things I've noticed is there's another discussion now again on alpha. Alpha, you know, I, be, be honest with you, I do listen sometimes to Angry Man. I do listen sometimes to um, Edward Allen. And I do listen to T AM1. And I do listen to quite a few people. And one of the things is, once the discussion starts to talk about alpha, and someone rightfully said that alpha, the whole thing, discussion about alpha and beta and all that stuff it's kind of like astrology for men i found that funny but it's not really it's trying to define what it means to be a top man an apex man and you know nietzsche wrote something you know ubermensch you know the superman the uberman and you know once you hear that it's always men trying to figure out how they can advance themselves how they can be top. And when I first started listening to the Manosphere, one of the things that I was very concerned with was that they were talking about non-select and select men. And it was really basically who women choose are select men and who women don't want to choose are non-select men. That was a very, I would say, that argument did not hold water and it created big problems because... It got into the whole thing of, you know, you're born with it, you're tall, you're handsome, so therefore women select you, and therefore you are somehow an advanced man. And in life, that's not true, because in life, you know, just take this analogy, um, men want beautiful women. There's no doubt about it. Men want beautiful women. Now let's look at, the, look at it. When a woman is in high school, and or she, you know, she's in high school, her parents are taking care of her. She doesn't have to worry about food, shelter, all of that stuff. She's going to say, okay, that guy's handsome. He's tall. He looks nice. You know, um, he's the guy that I want. When she has to be fin taken care of or, you know, be in partnership with someone, she needs someone who can provide, who can hold their weight. And this non-select select argument never covered the fact that all men, select or non-select, have to become good providers or good partners, one of them and or both and one of the things is as men if i tie it right back into the original thing is a lot of us men who are lost today are not in the position to be good partners or good providers and that's the real problem it has nothing to do with being six foot tall or or you know the symmetry of your face all of that stuff that stuff is secondary the main thing is are we competing in the job market are we competing in resources and that's the most important thing you know someone came in my comment section and you know was talking about i did some post about kobe brand leaving back a you know a, a large um leaving back you know a, a large legacy for his family over six they say between 600 and 800 million dollars now, with Kobe leaving this large legacy for his family, you know, this is something that even though he died, you know, prematurely through that helicopter crash, crash, he has left something for his family. If you're going to talk about Alpha, Beta, Sigma, Delta, all of that stuff, that's the most Alpha thing any man can do. Leave a legacy that his, 
this family is only grieving for him. They're not grieving because they don't have money or food to eat or, or, or they can't go on the vacation. They're grieving because their provider for their family has passed away. Now, this man was was talking about something different that they would waste it. For me, I don't care about that. The fact of the matter is he left it for them. I mean, um, but what I wanted to get across is a lot of us are lost because we're, we can't fulfill that provider that provide and partner role and until we resolve that we're going to be unhappy and we're going to come here all the time talking all this nonsense because no matter how beautiful a man is and handsome and tall or whatever it is it will come a point in time that he has to provide for his family he has to because if he does not then he's not protecting his family because if you don't provide, then that family is at the bus stop or the train station begging. Now, I mean, what, what value is his beauty? What value is his, his um, attractiveness? Very little to that woman. When she has her first child and, you know, they can't pay the bill or, you know, she has to go to some shelter. His, no matter how select he is, that doesn't help her. And when we pass these high school discussions about looks and height and all of this stuff and get into the real life discussion the adult discussion of how to become better providers and later on how to form a proper community we have to we need rules in a community like sometimes we have to understand that the old way is this has to be destroyed the old way of snitching and no snitch policy people fighting in the streets you know this whole you know caveman style alpha all that has to stop because that's not benefiting our community it's not it has never benefited our community you know when we were in africa all of us because i'm from jamaica i mean probably you listening here from the u.s or canada or wherever it is we are we originally if you're black originally came from africa and we were as strong as we i'm sure we were as strong as we are today physically strong i sure we could put a whipping on anyone but we still were carted off across the sea and still put to work and many of us still don't understand and still don't want to well i, I think we understand but we don't want to accept it that until we understand that the corporate structure and i'm not just talking about business i'm talking corporate structure in the world has taken over and a corporate structure means that these old discussions of alpha beta sigma all of that stuff it has to succumb to the point that we are all required to be good leaders and good followers good leaders and good followers and what do i mean by that you know i was looking at um it was a tiktok video and it was about you know the different ranks in the army of both the u.s and the, the um british army and what what and it wasn't astounding there's probably about 20 levels in these armies so i mean the lowest for them i think is let's just i i can't even remember what it is but you know th there's a low level you know the first guy that comes in he's at the lowest level and he has to report to someone and let's say he's reporting to a corporal that corporal has to report to, you know, that corporal may be the fourth corporal. He has to report to a third corporal. A third corporal report to a second corporal. So at some point, let's say you have a brigadier, right? Who's probably three ranks below, you know, general of the army or, or you know, you know, the highest thing, general. Let's say that he's there. You tell me that is that brigadier a leader only? But doesn't he have to follow the orders of someone above him? And that's the problem that many of us have. We don't, like we all want to be leaders, but we don't understand how to follow. And one of the things I will say is there is a bigger structure and we have to understand what organization or structure we follow. And for me, the organization structure I follow is the betterment of society. Like whoever is in apart from the betterment, who is, whoever wants the betterment of society, that's what I'm a part of. I want to live in a safe place. I want to provide a future for my children. I, that's it. You know, safe place, provide future for my children. And you know what? My children are no different than your children. So safe place for you, safe place for everyone and a good community, a nice place, you know, 
that's all I want. And maybe some people want other things. Then you need to be a part of that organization. But whatever organization you are a part of, you have to be a good leader and a good follower. And you have to provide something. Being select, being attractive, being all of that stuff, that does not benefit well, that may benefit someone in a high school mindset. Oh, he's attractive. Look how beautiful. Look how, look how attractive he is. But guess what? If you can't provide, what's going to happen? You know, you're going to have your wife, your baby mother, whatever, living unprotected, living off of social assistance. She's going to hate you after a while. She's going to dislike you, no matter how handsome you are. And if you're unattractive physically, trust me. If you, if you are living in a nice neighborhood with your nice car and, and enjoying life, you know, whatever, believe you me, you know, and you have a good personality, within a few years, you'll find someone attractive. I mean, I'm not the most attractive person. And if you saw my wife, she, like, she's, she's quite beautiful. And you know what? In the end, I learned this myself, right? I learned this myself that. You know, those are guys like us who are not the select, you know, the high school select. You know, we we sometimes are the comeback kids. We're the ones that work hard, you know, build a career, do something in our lives. And that's the attraction. That is the attraction. Some guys, they're attractive. They, they do hard work and whatever. The world is theirs. And that's good for them. I just want a safe place for my family you know, opportunity for them. And I want a safe place for you and your family too and all of that stuff. I also understand that I have to work hard. I have to innovate. I have to create something. I have to I have to do something that is of value to my employer, my customers, all of that stuff. As men, we have to provide value. And the thing is, value is just not created, you know, out of thin air. Value a lot of times is created out of learning a trade, learning a skill. You know, back in the day, a man would be known as Bill the blacksmith. And the reason why they knew him as Bill the blacksmith is that every time the horse, you know, was running around and the horse, you know, needed a new shoe put on, they thought of Bill. They didn't want to take it to, to Ned. Ned probably couldn't do, do it properly, but Bill. And then probably Ned was starving and Ned started working for Bill. And Bill was the blacksmith. And guess what? Bill the blacksmith, he's probably, you know, you know big, big stomach and probably burly. And guess what? You know, a lady, you know, one, one of, one of um, maybe Ned has a beautiful, you know, daughter. And she said, you know, Ned says, hey, you know, hey, Holly, you know, you should go marry Bill. Because Bill, you know, he's a good blacksmith. And you, you'll be secure, have a good future, secure. Now, Bill has a beautiful wife. He has an employee. And he has status. He's not an attractive man. But he is Bill, the blacksmith. And that's the same thing that we need to understand. You know, some of us, we need to be, we need to be Tyrone the trucker. You know? Some of us need to be Xavier the forklift man. And whatever it is, but be something that adds value. And once we find that, you know, I think it'll be better. You know, years ago, and what we're going through now is no different than what we were going through way back in the early 90s. There was a period in the early 90s where people were wearing flannel shirts and you had Kurt Cobain singing Smells Like Team Spirit and all that stuff. Go back there. That was when they were talking about the slackers, that that generation <laughs> who were graduating in the early 90s were slackers. And how could you get them to wake up and all that stuff? That back then, you know, that was when Bill Clinton came in and, you know, Rush Limbaugh was on the airways talking about the angry white men and all that stuff. This is just a repeat of it. This is what, 30 years later, is the same thing happening, right? And those guys who, you know, could not find a job, did not want to get a job, were in the Seattle grunge scene, all of that stuff, or the Northwest grunge scene. They're no corporate guys, you know? They're the guys telling everyone to, to buck up and do, do you know, get, it, get to work. So, you know, this is just a, a time. But the reality of it all is, is that this discontentment, this wanting to be an alpha, is not the unsolvable. The solvable is waking up, 
getting there and doing something with your life, being of value. And until you do that, we'll all be blaming someone for something, you know. And I'll tell you, the sooner someone wakes up from blaming someone for their problems, I think that that's when they start to fix the problems in their own life. Guys, I just wanted that rant take, rant hot, or hot rant take on this topic because I've been hearing quite a few things. And one of the things is, you know, it's my lived experience. It's probably not transferable, but I'm just going to tell you how I feel about it. Thanks, guys.